by God's little mountain. Maybe the black meat set for tonight. Like it says here in my ma'am's book. I'd be dead by now. But you're not dead, I see. No daughter of mine shall stuff her head with them old wives' tales. You old beast, you! Well, if you didn't take needle and thread to that dresser yarn, you'll be mother naked in a week. It will not mend. Fox would like me to get a new one. I'll go to Wenlock in the morning. Uh, stew's burnt again. <laughs> Yammering. Play harps in heaven. The mountain ash.
Percy. You forgot the old one. Margarine, Mr. James, is just as good as butter. Butter's made of milk. Ah, but where does the milk come from? From the cow. And what does a cow eat? Buttercups. Hey, Albert. Vegetation. Now what? I say, Hazel. How do I look, Cousin Albert? Jam. My word, you're jam, Hazel. I'm going to tea to Auntie's now. I'm fair famished. I always take ten minutes for tea time. Are you staying the night, Hazel? There's a magic lantern show on tonight. Maybe your mother won't ask me to stay. You leave that to me, Hazel. You were saying when we was interrupted, Calvin. Sorry, Mr. James. What, what was I saying? Vegetation. Oh, vegetation, yes. Now, margarine is made from vegetation like... Like, like, like butter. Made by machines, not by cows. Ah, but just as good. Now, let me explain. Butter doesn't need any explanation, Albert. Good day. Good day, Mr. James. I never seen a magic lantern show, Albert. By gum, Hazel, you're... 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 Butter. It's a disgrace the way you look in that dress. You look like an actress. Do I, Aunt Proud? You do. You quite draw men's eyes. It's nice to draw men's eyes. Isn't it, Aunt Proud? <laughs> Jam. If you go on the way I'm going, you'll get picked up, my girl. I'd like to see anyone pick me up. I'd kick. I don't mean it that way. You take off your mark. I'd be glad. You ought to be as glad to take after one parent as another if you were dutable. Your mother was a gypsy, first and last, not to old nor to bind. Some Christian to be born in a caravan as she was. She was as good a Christian as some folk. Ah. Are you going back to the store? Well, see you later, Hazel. You won't see her later because Hazel must start now to get back before nightfall. Well, Hazel's staying the night, Mother, surely. Hazel must go back to her father, as short a room as it is. She can have my room. Hazel can have your room. It's not suitable. Well, well let her share yours, then. Little I thought when your dear father went that before three years had passed, you'd be so forgetful of my comfort as to suggest such a thing. Oh, Mother. As long as I live, my room's mine. When I'm gone, the sooner the better for you, no doubt. You can put her in my room, and yourself too. <gasps> Dear, that he never will. I keeps myself to myself. By the night, and my foot's blistered in a balloon, and there's blood on my new dress. What's your name? Hazel. Hazel what? Just Hazel. Well, mine's Reddin. Jack Reddin. Why you're so dark about yours, I don't know. But up you get anyway.
your arm, pulling me in. He liked the Sunday school tale of Jesus Christ and Peter on the wild sea. Me being Peter. Get up there. Grassons. Young lady's lost her way. You'll find it for her, I make no doubt. Get the brute mares in. They should have been in this hour. Bear hound dogs. Nasty, snabbing things. What's the matter with you? You don't lie down, you fool. You've seen a girl before. You. You want poor foxes. So he ought. Vermin. <laughs> you looks like a hound dog when you laugh. And you, you keep away from our foxy. Who's foxy? The little small covers I took and reared. You reared her, did you? Ah. She lost her ma'am. I'm her ma'am now. Like the picture? Or is it the dress you like? stayed at under and you could wear a new dress every day of the week. If ifs and ands were beans and bacon, this feud go with empty bellies. Put it on. I'll see how Bessons is getting on with the supper. Can't stand your manners much longer, Vessons. Give me notice then. Get back to your kitchen. Never shall it be said as a poor and protected female found no friend in Andrew Vesson. Oh, shut up. to sing. Father.
your father. Father's wonderful with the music. He wins money prizes. And he plays the chapel meetings up on God's Little Mountain. Supper's burnt. Burnt? Ah, to a cinder. How did you do that, you fool? Harping to the lady, teaching me how to sing. Get out into the stable and stay there. Couldn't he stay in the house? No. Put it on. I'd rather not. Put it on, my lady. I've been at your lady. Trouble for nothing. Hazel? All right, sulk. It doesn't hurt me. I never ran after a woman in my life. <laughs> Angry? Ah. Uh. You can have my room above the stables for the night. There's a key to it. Here you be. Where will you sleep, Mr. Vessens? Never you mind. No woman shall ever tell Andrew Vessens where to sleep. I'll wake you at daybreak. A mug of beer. I brew it myself. If you don't mind, I'd rather tea. Tea? Lord, how furiously do the women rage after tea. Tea it shall be. Where do you live? You needn't be scared to tell me. I'm six and sixty. You'll not tell him. Him? <laughs> not wild horses shall drag it from me. Nor yet blood horses. Nor hunters. Nor cart horses. Nor Suffolk punches. I live at the Cala. Cala? What, that lost and forgotten place to the other side of God's little mountain? <laughs> it in a lost and forgotten. 
We've got bees. So have I got bees. And a music. A music? What's a music? You can't eat a music. My dad makes coffins. Does he now? Ah, but you haven't got a swan made out of a yew tree. Well, I am. Twenty years I've been a clipping it. Only the beak is missing. Never tell him where I live. Never in life. Never tell him. Unless he asks a deal and can't arrest. He may ask till doomsday. This is a dundon. Never will I. Mother? You told me a lady singer was coming. Yes, that's right. Her father accompanies her on the harp. Mr. and Miss Willis. Hi, Come on, girl! You were born. A cow and a calf fell down that there place. Hundreds of feet. Did they save him? Shh, Lars, no. I was all of a jelly. Oh, I can't bear it. It's a fearsome place. Lars, now what's the matter with the girl? Lord, when it came on me, I'll die as well as others. You only just found that out. <laughs> What a queen of fools you be! Seems the world's a big spring trap and us in it. Art to the music! You're too Nash. That's what you be. Nash. Six minutes. Half it! Woodis. Glad to see you, and you, Miss Woodis. It's a plain day. We were afraid you weren't coming. Minister, there's Abel Woodis and his girl now. and I've been.
Sure, regular beat, my man. Been here twenty-six years. Come, Artemis. Do you know a chap around here that plays the fiddle well? Many. Uh, with a pretty daughter, skinny, black hair. Can't say as I call him to mind. Go on, Hazel. Have another one. Why not? All the years I've been to do is I've had tartlets, and tartlets I love. I played the same as others. Oh, but they're all done, Mr. James. I've had no finger in empty of them. I thought you sang beautifully, Miss Willis. Very beautiful. Have a tartlet, Minister. Making a big Sunday sermon. I should be very pleased if you come to supper on Sunday. What will the sleepy old lady say? Oh, my mother will be very pleased, too. Uh, you can tell your father I should see you home. I'm much obliged. Then we'll meet again Sunday. Thank you. Mother, I've asked Miss Woodis to supper. On Sunday. She is not of your class, Edward. What does class matter? Whether it is mistaken kindness, dear, or silly flirtation, it can only do you harm at the congregation. Both of them. People are waiting for you to say grace, dear. Sisters and brethren, Silence for grace. For what we have received, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. I have not received tartlets. I am not thankful. Train terrier? I says he would not. Shim a fox. Aye, fox or terrier, as I make the laws. What goes against me gets drowned. It ain't all for you. Huh? The world wanna made in seven days, only for Abel Woodis. Hmm. Put her in coffin. Come back very pert from Wenlock this time. Very pert you are. You're too uppish. It's time you was married. If anyone be fool enough to ask you. Maybe there's many as would. Uh. Maybe I'll marry a fine gentleman. <laughs> It'd be worth it to get away from the cala. Well, a house couldn't be any dirtier than it is now. You, I swear I'll wed the first as comes. The very first. What will you swear by? Will you swear by God's little mountain? You swear to marry the first as comes, whoever he be. I swear. Two 
lines are off. Might be the black huntsman himself. Hi, landlord. Come in, sir. Good evening. Evening. The foil holds your horse. No, I won't come in. Sherry out here, please. Sarah, a glass of sherry for the gentleman. Do you know any pretty girl around here with black hair, green eyes? Father plays the fiddle. No, sir. What women there be around here are weathered and case hardened. No fiddler, chap. Plays at the parish meetings. Hey, give us music, you're after, squire. I know music better than fiddles. That's our. Oh, blast your horse. Think I look like an angel? A concert, funeral, or a wedding? I'm your man. Might be the last. Wedding or bedding, eh, Squire? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Get up there. He's got the blood of little foxes on him, Foxy. Any fiddles in your parish, Parson? Yes. There's one the far side of the mountain. Pretty daughter? No. She's only 20. And I told Father I'd married the first to come. I swore it by the mountain. And, uh, nobody came? Never a one. Nobody at all? Never a one. And if anyone came and asked you to marry him, you would? Well, I'm bound to, seemingly. But none will ever come. What for should they? Would you like to be married? My ma'am didn't like it. She said, tears in torment. Tears in torment was a married lot. And she said, keep yourself to yourself. You want a maid for marrying any more than me. Eat in company, but sleep alone. That's what she said, Mr. Marston. And how many brothers and sisters have you, my dear? Never a one. Nobody but our foxy. Edward, too, has none. Give her a chair, my dear. I'm well enough as I am. And who is foxy? Your little cub. You speak as if the animal were a relation, dear. So all animals be, my brothers and sisters. I know, dear, quite right. All animals in conversation should be so. But any single animal, in reality, is only an animal. And animals have no souls. Yes, they have, then. If they have no, you have no. Perhaps you will read to us, dear. Yes, ma'am. I wonder who that can be this hour. Martha will answer it. Yes, ma'am. Who can it be, riding late at night, Mrs. Marston? Did you hear the horse, my dear? I don't know. A fiddler chap with a pretty daughter. Come in. Won't you? Mother Martha's... I'm sorry to look in so late, Mrs. Marston, but I met a gentleman on horseback in the lane asking all kinds of questions, and I had to walk back with him to the crossroads. You said you wanted something from Wendell. Oh, yes, some knitting wool, the same as before. Edward, Miss Woodis wants to go home. Were there anybody else there at the door? No. I thought I heard someone.
Hazel, huh? Will you marry me, Hazel? You've been mighty quick about it. Yes. I know I have. To me! Wait a minute, Mr. Marston. Here she is. So this is Foxy. No. Will you marry me, Hazel? I can give you a good home. Now try and be a good husband to you. And I love you. Do you love me as much as I love Foxy? Far more. Ain't you, dear? Go along, Milne. your trouble? I wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. Well, here I be. I want to marry Hazel. Woman grow. You can have her. When do you want her? Well, Hazel must decide that. Lors, man, tell her what to do. She'll do it. You take her stick to her now and again. When will you be my wife? Hazel? I don't know. Not for days and days. Yeah, yeah, look at her. Throw something at her, man. I think I should prefer your absence. Mm. Go away. <laughs> That's the way to talk to him. What do you say to next August? I'd like it right well. The Sunday after the county fair. Dad and me are going. Then we go together. My mother will help to get the things. What kind of things? Oh, pretty clothes. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Thank you kindly, Minister. Edward. Edward. It's not lack of belief in thy will, Father. But I ask you to marry me now. Because what I want is not for myself. I want to protect her. 
to cherish her in my house, like a flower. And this I promise, that I shall ask nothing of her, nothing, until she wants to be a wife to me. about you in the past. He's going to marry me tomorrow. The devil he is. Who to? To him. What? We're going to be wed. The parson and you? And Foxy's coming too. And he's given me a box full of clothes. So did I. Yours are old ones. You've got to come and talk to me tonight while they're dancing. I cannot. If you don't, I'll tell the parson you stayed the night at London. Then he won't marry you. You would not do that, Mr. Reddit. And I? You wouldn't. Is the minister staying for the dancing? Is your father here? Well, then tell the parson you're staying with him. What went wrong, Mr. Reddit? Everything. Thank you. 
word with you. I saw you with Mr. Reddy this afternoon. I only wanted to say in a sisterly and Christian spirit, he's not a good man. Well, that's something anyway. If you take my advice, you leave him alone. I cannot. Oh, why not? He will not let me. Can't you see that I'm in love with you? What for, be? There's you and there's Edward. Why can't you leave me, be? I never thought I'd come to 40 and be like this. Be 40? I suppose the parson's young. In the right age. I'll show you who's the right age. Hands off, Mr. Reddy. Now come and dance. We'll see if a man of 40 can't tie you. What's the good, Mr. Redden? I'm promised. Hazel, you do like me, don't you? Better than the parson. Hazel! Who's that? Father. I want to marry your daughter. First the parson, then he's the squire. It'll be the king on his throne next. <laughs> you hear what I said? He said... What? He said... He spoke. Let. She's a right to change her mind. Aye, bargain's a bargain. The cake's made, mister. And so's the bag. Fifty pounds. You should go away with a check in your pocket if she comes with me. Fifty pounds. Huh? It's all I've got in ready cash. Hey, mister. Didn't ought to go and entice me. Hey, dear heart. I could have... I could have the garden lined with beehives from end to end. The wood I could buy and the white paint. And queens from foreign parts. Bargain's a bargain, Hazel. You manna go with this gentleman. Mind you, many's the time in the past you've gone against me and done what I gain said. Many a time. You don't like hurting things, Hazel. You're hurting me. It ain't my fault. I'm always hurting things. It ain't my fault. And an editor will look after me and Foxy and the others. And you... You've got blood on you, Mr. Reddit. Well, I'll even give up the hunting if you'll chuck the parson. I promise. <laughs> you wouldn't keep it. Seems I've got to go again. You or Eddard. And I can't go again, Eddard. He said, store by me. And I swore it by the mountain. What? If I broke that oath, my cold soul would wander about the mountain, finding never a bit of rest. And that it seemed it was a wind. What was it you swore? To marry the first as comes. In one of you, Mr. Reddy. In one of you.
the minister, say I. You'll not get another bite of that apple. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also will I bring. We are gathered together here to witness the union of this man and this woman in the sacred covenant of marriage to hear their vows and to seek for them the help and blessing of God in whose presence we stand. Therefore it is fit that we bear in mind that marriage was ordained of God for the increase of mankind according to his will and for the mutual society held in the <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't bother a bottle of this thing up with him, am I? <laughs> Mrs. Marston. Shall I draw the blind, ma'am? Oh, let me hear it. On the profession of thy faith in Christ, 
I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful. One of the nicest baptisms I ever saw. <laughs> oh dear, there's always someone. Hazel, you better go upstairs. Good afternoon. I'd like to see the minister. May I come in? Oh yes, yes, do come in. <clears throat> Such a hot day. My son won't be a moment. Can I get you something to drink, Mr... Uh, Redden. Jack Redden. Of London. Uh, if you have a little sherry, perhaps. Oh, I misdoubt if we have any of last Christmas pudding's bottle left. But I'll go and see. Shall I come up? Leave me be. You don't want me to. Meet me at Hunter Spinney. Next Sunday. Same time as now. Martha, the best glasses. Promise. Why? Because I say so. I'm quite put out about that sherry. But here's some sparkling gooseberry wine. Four years old last midsummer. Oh, you've met my daughter-in-law, Mrs. Edward Marston. Oh, oh allow me. Thank you. Mm. Quite up, you see. Are you all right, Hazel? Edward, there's a gentleman to see you, dear Mr. Redden of London. Ah, yes, Mr. Redden. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. I saw a little of your baptism. Very amusing. Perhaps I'll come again one day. You're welcome, Mr. Redding. The next time, perhaps you'll find it even more amusing. The third time, you'll be singing hymns with us. And the fourth time... Thank you, Mother. I might even be baptizing you. You seem very sure of yourself, Parson. I'm sure of my faith, Squire. Harper's charm. It's my ma'am's book. Hazel, may I? May I see it? When it wants a little of midnight, climb to the stiper stones on the top of God's little mountain. Lay your shawl on the devil's chair and walk around it. Goodishin? That's the other way to the sun. Ask your wish 
And if the undertaking is good, you will hear the fairy music. If you hear it ever so faintly, you can go to the end of your undertaking. And there'll be no tears in it. This is a sure charm and cannot be broke. What is this important undertaking? Hmm? Has it anything to do with me? Ah. Uh. Can't you tell me? If I was caught in a trap, Eddard, who'd help me out? God would. He doesn't let the others out. He does answer prayers, Hazel. If he did, where would the fox hunting gents be? And who'd eat rabbit pie? Eddard. Hazel. Hazel, are you really happy here? Ah, uh, I be. I thought you might. Yes. Father? You, my father, and Mother both. If I be to go to under Spinney, if I be to go, let me hear the fairy music.
Look. Call your master. Hazel is safe. Thank you, all of you. Please excuse me. Hume's the one should know. Isn't she here? No. Ain't she on the mountain? No. She's 
Almost on. Run off, is she? Have you... Have you any idea where she is? Haven't you? Have you? No, I didn't. No, you ain't. Bargain's a bargain. That's what I told her. You married her. You best find her. Men were deceivers ever. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. For a married woman? Or whatever you may be, Mrs. Ha, <laughs> you're jealous. I misses it on Dern. Never will I. Them blackbirds is after my fruit. I'll kill him. I'll kill him dead. Shoot a blackbird, the milk will turn bloody. Like I'd killed him coming here, John Dern. Nonsense. Is it? Well, is it? No. And now it's notice. Notice has been given one month by Andrew Vessens to John Reddin, the Squire of Undern. Why, Vessens? You and I can't part, you know that? We must. But why, man? What's wrong, Andrew? She mocked me. Did you, Hazel? I only said... Her said, never will I. Ah, that's what her said. Never will I, that's what I say. What have you been doing to the old man? I'll do no woman's will. Maiden, I stay till my dying day. Now, look here, man. Be reasonable. Listen to me. I'm your master, aren't I? Ah, till a month. And you take your orders from me. I'm master here. So we say no more about it. Notice it took back.
Come back here, Hazel. What's the matter? You want that old fellow more than you want me. Be silly. He has his uses. You have yours. If you can't be civil spoken, I'll go. You can't go. Shall I tell you why? Who cried in Hunter Spinney? No, don't, Hazel. Who had tears in his eyes? Who sat there without a breath in him? And the tears coming down his cheeks like a baby. Oh, Hazel. You do want to stay. You did want to come with me, didn't you? Not till you made me. But maybe you couldn't help it. Maybe it was drove to it. Something strong, as dry as us all. Hazel, if, if I told you that... No, don't say aught. You kind of run the words comfortable over your tongue like Edith can. I wish I had Foxy here. Go and get her in the morning. No, let her bite. She's safe at Edwards. Tea, Edward. I know where Hazel is. You know where she is, Mother. Why didn't you tell me? I am telling you, dear. It's all over the town, most unpleasant. But I never thought Hazel was steadfast. Mother, where is she? Dear, you're all in a fever. You've had nothing to eat yet. A little preserve. <laughs> Your poor father always said you'd break out someday, and you have. The best dish. It was jam. I see nothing about jam. It's jam after all. It's cut glass dish. Mother, oh, where is she? It was much more peaceful without her. And I wish Mr. Redding well of her. Redding? Mr. Redding of London. Where are you going? Listen, Jack. Just like me dad's eye. I've got a horse and trap outside. I've come to take you home. Oh, 
Where is Get your things. What for did you come? You'll be back in a minute. You're my wife and you're coming back with me. Well, do you want me to drag you out? Or are you coming of your own accord? You went with him of your own accord, didn't you? Didn't you? Ah, uh, but I didn't want to. I didn't. How can both be true? Maybe. But how did he compel you to go? How? The sign said to go down to Spinney. And then... And then he pulled me on his horse and brought me here. The signs? The Harper's charm. And then you went to the end of your undertaking and there were no tears in it. Simple. Oh, simple. Oh, very simple. Every village I went through this evening, everybody knew it. Everybody, except me. Oh, leave me be, Edward. I can't bear it. You told a good many lies, didn't you? Be kind, Edward. What a fool I was. Well, I'm not particular. And you're my wife. She was never your wife. Get your things. No use talking, Parson. She's mine. From head to foot. You swine. <laughs> now you're talking. If you want to fight, come outside. Do you want to lay finger on him? Why, is it bad manners to fight in front of a lady? Or is the guest beneath your roof sacred? But not his wife under his own. If you want to fight, say so, but don't preach all night. Hands off him. Can't you see she needs a man, not a short-winded parson? She needs a man to hold her, and not by preaching. She and the other little vixen. Harkin, <laughs> Rambler! Forky! <laughs> Let me go! Shut Leave me be! Shut up. I want to go with Eddard and Foxy! You don't know what you want. I don't want to see you ever, Jack Redden. You're a cruel beast. And you got blood on you. Well, go with him then. See how you'll like it. You can have her, Marston. When I want her, she'll come running. Has she ever called you that? Oh, get out of here, both of you, before I throw you out. Will you be three for dinner, or one? Get out! Are you going to bring this woman back under your roof? Yes. If you bring that woman here, I will be no mother to you. No, Hazel. Eddie. No. 
Eddie, my little lad. I'm getting old, dear. I haven't many more years. She has all her lifetime. You will put me before her. Eddie! When the missus goes, I go. For I kept myself respectable all these years, and I'll serve no light woman. Very well, Martha. Nor sleep in a house given over to sin. You're not going tonight, Mother. I will not stay for one hour under the same roof as that wicked woman. What are you staring at? The world, Mother. I shall stay tonight at the Hunter's Arms. Martha can pack my things tomorrow. Wish to speak to us. To you. Come in. This young woman might, I think, have sent herself. Would you rather stay or go, Hazel? Stay along are you, Eddie. We've come, Minister, six God-fearing men, with me, spokesman, being senior deacon. Yes, get on with it. We 
we bring you the Lord's message, Minister. I speak for him. You're sure? Has not he answered us each and severally with a loud voice in the night watches? Praise the Lord. Aye, that be true. And what we are to say is this. The adulteress must go. If you don't dismiss this female, we'll take it to the church meeting. No need. We're going. Oh, don't say that, Minister. Oh, yes. I'm giving up the ministry. If you take this woman with you, you'll be accursed. I suppose you know what they're saying. Saying? That you've made a tidy bit. Mr. James. Check sign J. Redding going into your bank, dear me. Of course, we know it in a true, Minister. Don't I mind him, my soul? What for should you? Curse you. Curse you for tormenting my Edward. It is the best man in all the county. Mm, the best. And you yourself, a, a sinner. And who are you to judge? How do you know it was Hazel's fault? It was mine. I could try and explain. But not to you. You think everybody has a price, as you have, James. Now, let me finish. I'd like to flog you off the mountain, James. But you rule this world. Little, smug, pot-bellied gods. That's... Get out! Please go. All of you. Foxy, Foxy, Dad. Foxy.
dangerous, Foxy. Get it off! 